Hello, my name is Jeff Pope. I'm the policy debate coach here at East High School. This video and ones that follow it are a welcome and introduction to the world of policy debate. The goal of these videos is to give you some insight into maybe what you have gotten yourselves into, why you should stay with policy debate, and then a deeper dive on how we can become good at policy debate. But before we start talking about what is policy debate, let's first answer the question of why you should do policy debate. Well, first and foremost, it's fun. You can meet other members of the team who will tell you that. I will tell you that. And I think your experience, if you stay with it long enough, will show you that. But in addition to that, you get the chance to obtain a lot of skills, job skills, life skills. You have the opportunity to learn about subjects that you probably wouldn't learn about in any other class in high school. And you get to argue a lot. And if that's what you like to do, then we are the place for you. Also, debate is an intense, strategic game. So for those of you who like to compete, like to think, like to develop strategy and tactics, you can do that in many ways, but policy debate is a game that allows you to do just that. So let's talk about what is policy debate. Well, I've already spoiled the first part, it's a game. It's a game that we play based upon academic research. Unlike sports that involves a ball, our arguments and our game revolve around our ability to persuade another person that we're correct. The goal of that persuasion centers each year on a topic or what we call a resolution that is selected by the National Speech and Debate Association. We will take a look at a couple examples of those resolutions from years past and talk about how they work. But those resolutions ultimately focus each debate round on a policy idea hence the name policy debate. And then the ultimate uh, outcome of the debate is to determine whether or not that policy is a good or a bad idea. We do this using arguments, namely two types of arguments. Logical arguments that depend upon your common knowledge, your ability to identify logical fallacies in your opponent's arguments, or to develop strong logical arguments of your own. We also rely on what we call evidence. And no, that's not the type of evidence that you would see in a courtroom. Instead, evidence in the world of policy debate refers to research from people who know a particular topic and have become experts in it. And we'll talk more about that later on. But here are some examples of what I meant by resolutions. You can read them for yourselves, but I want to point out a couple of things that really define what policy debate is all about. As you will notice, each resolution require, has the phrase, the United States federal government should, and then it explains what they should do. So every policy debate topic and every policy debate round centers around the U.S. federal government doing something, and more specifically, passing a policy. And then what that policy concerns is what follows in the remainder of the resolution. So as you can see from the top bullet point, we've had the chance to debate about the federal government changing education policy. The second bullet point was about changing arms sales policy. And if you're watching this video in 2020, the third bullet point is the topic we will debate for that school year, namely that the federal government should change our criminal justice system in three different areas. But no matter what year you're listening to this video or watching it, these are the exact ways resolutions are going to be structured. They always have been. So let's talk about how policy debate actually works. There's a team of two people. So it's you, a friend, you, and a stranger who you've just gotten to know by joining our program get to debate together. And as a team, you will take both possible sides of a resolution. There's the affirmative side and the negative side. We'll talk about each of those in a little more detail, but in a 
debate setting, you have the chance to be on both sides of the resolution and as a result, learn about both sides of the resolution. As a speech and debate activity, one naturally understands that there are speeches involved. There are two types of speeches in policy debate, a constructive speech and a rebuttal speech. Another video will talk in more detail about them, but for now, it's in, it, all you need to understand is that a constructive speech is focused mainly on building your arguments, whereas the rebuttal speeches tend to be focused on rebutting claims that your opponents make while also building back up arguments you constructed and you're constructive. There is also a cross-examination period in policy debate, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It is an opportunity for you to either ask or answer questions. We'll talk about that in just a second. And finally, when all of these elements are combined and you have a debate round, ultimately a judge picks the winner of the debate. And we'll talk more about what judges do, who they are, and how they function in a moment. But now let's talk about the sides of the debate. The first side is the affirmative team. They are the team that speaks first in a debate round and speaks last. The affirmative team has one job, affirm the resolution, prove why whatever topic we're debating, whatever action the federal government should take is a good one. And the way they do that is they propose a specific policy action based around the concepts of the resolution. So to give you an example, on the topic we looked at a moment ago about changing education policy, our affirmative was to make schools, namely middle and high schools, start after 8.30. And our argument was all about why teenagers should get more sleep. I'm sure all of you can relate to that. And that argument and that policy was presented in what we call the affirmative case. And for now, think of the affirmative case kind of like an essay. It's a pre-written set of arguments that argues why the policy the affirmative proposes is a good idea. We will certainly talk in more detail about what goes into the affirmative case, and you will actually see an example of that and hear what it sounds like to have one read and argued in a debate round. But for now, understand the basics of the affirmative job. The negative has the opposite job. They have to tell the judge that either the resolution is wrong or that the affirmative case is a bad idea. Unlike the affirmative, they do not have to read a formal case. They don't have to read that essay I mentioned a moment ago. Instead, they can read a variety of arguments designed to disprove the affirmative or the resolution. And those are listed down at the bottom. Now we are going to explore each of those types of arguments in a future video, but all of them are ultimately a reason why the affirmative is not a good idea and that the judge should decide to vote against it. So let's talk about the speeches that each side of the debate and each person competing in a debate round will give. As I mentioned, there's constructives and rebuttals. Each person in the round, all four people, give a constructive and a rebuttal. The times are identical for each of them. Constructive is eight minutes. A rebuttal is five minutes. And as you will notice down at the bottom of the screen, there's a very specific order that never changes in debate rounds about who goes first. And we will go through each of those speeches in detail in another video. But for you now, the order is essentially affirmative, then negative, affirmative, negative, affirmative, negative, and so on and so forth. Pretty standard format for debate, with one exception, which again, we will talk about in a later video. Cross-examination. As I mentioned, it is an ask and answer period. Each of you will have the opportunity to do both. On one occasion, you will get the chance to ask one of your opponents questions. And then on another occasion, you will have to answer questions from your opponents. And they occur after every constructive speech. They don't occur after rebuttals. Cross-examination has two goals. To clarify arguments that your opponents make 
Because after all, if you don't understand your opponent's arguments, you can't argue against them. And you need to attack your opponent's arguments in cross-examination. You can use questions to illustrate flaws or the absence of proof. And we'll do a deeper dive in a later video. Let's talk about judges. No, these are not the judges that you might see in a courtroom or see on TV that wear robes. Instead, these are coaches, former competitors, moms and dads, community members, with a varying degree of knowledge and background in policy debate, which is why you'll notice on the screen that you have to adapt. We will practice on how to engage and persuade different types of judges and judges with different types of experience and background in policy debate. The ultimate reason we do that is because the judge is responsible for signing the ballot. The ballot is just a piece of paper that indicates who wins and who loses a particular debate round. You obviously want the judge to decide that you and your partner won that round. So when I talk about rounds, what do I mean? Rounds are the actual debates that take place at tournaments. Uh, we travel to tournaments in Cheyenne across the state and in other states and compete against other high schools. And one of the ways we do that is to prepare arguments ahead of time. We know the resolution in advance and we work as a team to research and develop arguments both on the affirmative side of the debate and on the negative side of the debate. Then at tournaments, you are paired against another school and you debate them. And if you win a certain number of rounds, you advance to the elimination rounds, and then ultimately a winner is decided. Now, I will take this moment to end this video by saying that winning, it's important. It's why we compete. But it is not the be-all and end-all. There is a lot of fun, a lot of friendship, and frankly, a lot of family that we have the chance to develop along the way. I look forward to working with y'all, and welcome to the East Policy Debate Program.